Hi guys, and I'm Rich Critic here. And today we're going to review and talk about Jet Force Gemini. I think this is an average game, honestly. And I played this game before, and looking back at it, and I don't think I like it as much as of now. And looking back at it, it doesn't really hold up as much. Like, when I revisited this game, I really wanted to like it. I really want to give this game a second chance. But this game still has problems, and I still have issues with it. I think the controls of this game are abysmal. So guys, let's take a look at Jet Force Gemini, and let's find out and see for ourselves. So Jet Force Gemini was published by Nintendo, and it was developed by Rareware. So Jet Force Gemini came out in the Nintendo 64, and it was released in 1999. So Jet Force Gemini is a third-person shooter type game, and the game even features a single-player mode, where the player must explore the galaxy and save the universe, basically. And that's kind of basically the gist of the game, kind of what you do in the game. So the story of this game follows three members of a galactic law enforcement team called the Jet Force Gemini, and they're trying to stop a horror of alien bug drones led by some kind of insectoid alien creature called Mizar. So the game is a open world 3D platformer type third person shooter game. It's a third person kind of shooter game, but it's also an open world 3D, but it's also an open world platformer type game. So in the game, you travel across the galaxy in different worlds, and you go around, and you uh, go around, and you go around the whole universe to travel around, and you travel around to different planets, and you go to different planets. And you uh, travel all over the galaxy, and you uh, travel all over the universe, and you help people and civilization, and you uh, help different tribes and people, and, and protect the people, and that's kind of what you do. So you kind of like go around and help different civilizations and different tribes, and you help out those civilizations and tribes, and you, and you protect them, and you help them out. You uh, fight them off, but you protect those, you protect those tribes and so, and you um, help out those tribes, you help out those civilizations, you help out the different peoples of the of those worlds. You you fight off the the hordes you um protect from the horde you protect them from the hordes of the people in those planets and you uh, fight off the hordes from the people to protect the so is it to protect the different aliens and the different groups the and your job is to protect the people on different planets from the hordes. And your job is to protect the people and civilizations from the alien hordes from from the different planets. And the Jet Force Gemini team, they have to stop Mizar and save the galaxy and pretty much the universe. So in the Jet Force Gemini team, you follow three members of that group, and each character is unique in their own ability. And you follow uh, Juno, the leader of the group. And Juno, you can say, is the main character of the game. And you need to follow Juno's sister, Vela. And mostly in the game, you get to control Juno for the most part. And depending on which level you can move him in each level for the most part, but, and, you also have to move Vela in different stages and different levels, depending on each stage and depending on where you uh, have to control her, too. And sometimes in the game, you also follow the team's dog, Lupus. And Lupus is kind of cool, actually. And Lupus has a cannon gun on his back, which is cool. And you get to move uh, Lupus in different levels, different stages. In different different levels and different stages for Lupus, the dog. And you have to move him, and you have to move him to, and you have to move him around in different levels and different challenges and obstacles, depending on each stage. You know, he's there to like kind of help you or uh, help you out that is convenient for you. And you need to control him depending on which level you are and how much you need, need his help. But I think it's really cool. I don't know. I think, but I think it's kind of cool that he has like some kind of like laser gun on his back. That's actually kind of neat. Pretty creative, actually. And there's also a character called Floyd. And Floyd is a small flying robot drone who defected from Mizar. And he later joins you in the game. And that kind of actually now makes it now like four members of the Jet Force Gemini team. Now, Floyd assists you in the game. And he can access holes that are too small for the other team members to get in. And he has his own challenge areas and his own little mini levels. And he also acts as a player too when the second controller is plugged in too, by the way. And later in the finale of the game, Floyd rescues the Jet Force Gemini team. Later, Mizar sends a asteroid on a collision course to Earth. Floyd willingly gives his life to destroy the asteroid and save Earth from Mizar's asteroid. And the Jet Force Gemini team attach a warhead bomb, Floyd. And then later, Floyd enters the core of the asteroid by carrying a detonator bomb to its core. And he detonates a bomb to the asteroid. And he detonates the warhead bomb. And the asteroid gets blown up and destroyed, killing off both the asteroid and Floyd too. And this is his way of sacrificing himself. Thus, by sacrificing himself, he saved Earth and his friends of the Jet Force Gemini team. God, uh, may Floyd rest in peace. He will be missed, but not forgotten. Rest in peace, Floyd. 
But who? Oh, enough that sad mumbo jumbo. Now let's go back to the story of the game. Because I'm like, I, I don't want to hear this depressing shit. So back to like the game in general. Okay then. So the enemies of the game are mediocre in my opinion. And you fight the Floyd bots and the drones aliens. And these enemies look like ant bug slash kind of like mantis creatures type things. And they can be hard sometimes. But really, for the most part, they're just easy. And many times they're challenging, and other times they're just really simple to beat. So these enemies are okay, and the Floyd bots are okay enemies, and the drones aliens are okay enemies too. And overall, the enemies of this game are average to say the least. Also, the controls of this game are ass. Like, they were literally ass in this game. And I know that the N64 controllers were not perfect back then, but they were designed to be a little simple and easy for people. And I know once you use the N64 controllers, you know that the N64 controls, uh, that you will get used to them. You will get used to the controls of the N64 either way. And I know that the game are making the controls compatible to play them in the game. But at the same time, the controls for, for this game are just horrendous. And annoying as hell. And the controls are very good in this game sometimes. And the and the controls are fairly decent in the game. And But they're not that great. They're kind of clunky half the time. And I think the shooting of the game is fairly decent. But at the same time, the shooting is kind of frustrating in this game too. And I think the aiming is just downright terrible in this game. And the aiming is just so awful in this game. So now the bosses of the game. And the bosses of the game are really, for the most part, the, are really the most hardest boss fights I ever dealt with. They can also be a little simple to beat once you get used to them, when, once you know their weak spots. So the bosses overall are mediocre, and they are the most challenging to beat. And other times, they're a little easy depending on maybe if you get used to them or you know their weakness or how to beat them. Well, I don't know, once you play a lot and get used to the game, you'll know what I mean. And once you get used to the controls, you'll know what I mean. And other times, they're a little easy, and that's about it. And I think the bosses of the game are just really average. So in the first boss battle in the game, the first boss you fight is called Fetbub. And Fetbub was really hard. Oh, and he also played Juno. So he plays Juno to fight Fetbub, and I could barely pass him at first. It was hard to beat him at first, but I got used to it. And he actually, no, he was fairly easy. And once I figured out how to beat him and how to overcome him, he was really easy to beat. I was relieved, and it goes to show how hard this game can get and how crazy it is. And now, eventually, a Fetbub gets defeated and destroyed, and you kind of blow him up and kill him, really. So the second boss you fight is called Lurg, and you play as Vela, and Vela fights Lurg, and Lurg is uh, kind of a hard boss. It's actually an easy boss, a little challenging, but a fairly easy boss. I mean, you know, you gotta shoot at him, you gotta, like, blow him up, and, and you kind of, like, fight him in the sewer. You gotta, like, aim your gun and kind of shoot him in his weak spots, I guess. You gotta shoot his obstacles and kind of... I mean, he, he's a fairly... He's a really easy boss. You gotta shoot him and you gotta... You gotta shoot him and kind of, like, uh, blow him up. And that's kind of about it. So then after that, uh, Lurra gets defeated and destroyed. And, and he also gets, uh, I guess, blown up to bits and gets killed off. And that was it. So then he plays Lupus the dog. And the third boss you fight is called Mechantids. And Lupus fights McAntids. He actually, in my opinion, is actually a pretty hard boss. Um, he's a really hard boss. You gotta dodge his attacks. You gotta shoot in the distance. Aim at him. So make sure he doesn't hit you. Uh, you gotta dodge his attacks. You gotta aim at him. You gotta shoot him. You gotta shoot him in the distance. You gotta shoot at him. You gotta shoot your rockets and cannon at him. And half the time you gotta like jump and shoot him. And half the time you gotta like gotta jump over and shoot at him. Jump over his attacks. And you gotta like and, and and really to beat him you just gotta like aim and shoot at him. That's really all you gotta do half the time. And that's kind of about it. And then McAntis uh, then gets defeated and destroyed. And then McAntis and then McAntis uh, then gets blown up and gets killed pretty much. And that was it. So then you confront Mizar in his palace. And you're Mizar in the palace. You kind of fight him off. You got to kill him off there, I guess. So the fourth boss of the game, or the final boss of the game, is Mizar, finally. And I guess he's and he's the final boss of the game. And and the Jet Force Gemini team fronts Mizar. But then, you, I think, you just, like, fight him. And then you confront Mizar. And then the Jet Force Gemini team confronts Mizar. And right there about to do that, uh, Mizar tries to stop them. Jet Force Gemini team sends Lupus the dog. So the Jet Force Gemini team then sends Lupus is the dog to fight off and shoot at uh, Mizar and god he was hard fight Mizar and 
So Mizar, you fight Mizar. And Mizar, and Mizar is badly wounded, but he uh, retreats and runs away. So it's not the end yet, and you still have to fight him. Wounds Mizar, Mizar retreats and escapes. So it's not the end, you have to fight him later again eventually, oh my god. But that was it. Okay, so that, now let me tell you something. Mizar as the final boss, he, he, he is crazy as fuck. I mean, he is hard as fuck. And he was he was challenge he was the most challenging he was the most difficult boss I I ever have dealt with and shooting at him was hard and he was a very hard boss to, to overcome and he was the most hardest boss I ever fought so okay then you're in the ice world and then later you're in this like home planet of the Mizor and you're in the in this ice world you're in Mizor's asteroid and you have to stop Mizor's asteroid and, and you have to stop Mizor's asteroid before it hits the Earth. And you're all geared up. You have this cool equipment. God, Lu Lupus looks so cool. This tank that looks so fucking cool. God, that looks so cool. So then you gear up and you have like this new equipment metal on. This technology on. And uh, the Je Force Gemini team is all geared up. They have like metal. They have like new armor on. They have new equipment on. That's kind of cool. And Lupus, God, that looks tank. I mean, that, I don't know. That just looks so cool. I mean, Lupus is like a tank. God. He looks like a tank. Literally a tank. I mean, he literally looks like a tank. So the Jet Force Gemini team is all geared up. They have their stuff on. And you play as Juno to stop him this time and they're all geared up with weapons then Mizar attacks uh, the Jet Force Gemini team then Mi but then Mizar attacks Lupus and Villa but then Mizar attacks Juno and uh, Judo survives and Lupus and Villa are down and now it's only up to Juno to stop Mizar so then you confront Mizar again and then you confirm it for like the final time hopefully so then you confront Mizar you have to fight Mizar again so then you have to move as play as Juno to confront Mizar and in the final boss battle god it was not easy he was like the hardest boss battle yet. So like I tried shooting him and it was not easy, let me tell you something. And aiming at his spots was not easy too. And aiming at his weak points was frustrating and very stressful. But once I managed to beat him, and when I uh, beat him, I, uh, I took a deep breath and I had a sigh of relief. Really, thank God. God, that was, I mean, seriously, that was like the most hardest boss battles ever. It was just a really hard boss. It was like one of the hardest boss battles I had to beat. So then later, so then, and eventually, Mizar gets defeated and destroyed. And Mizar uh, gets blown up and, and you pretty much kill him after that. Okay, and so later, so later, Juno helps out his friends and, and Lupus and Vela recover and they're okay now. But then later, they have to like blow up uh, Mizar's asteroid. And like I said before, Floyd sacrifices his life to blow up Mizar's asteroid. So then Juno and uh, the Jet Force Gemini team, and then the Jet Force Gemini team and the other alien tribesmen and all the other characters escape, escape the asteroid. Floyd will be missed but not forgotten. And then you blow up Mizard's homeworld planet, and then Mizard's asteroid then gets blown up, and then you blow up the asteroid that was going to destroy Earth, by the way, and then you stop that finally. And then they just go home to their home planet, and that's it. So then later in the game, you save the whole universe and galaxy. So the game ends where later you save the whole galaxy, and all the alien civilization celebrates, and all the alien tribes, and everyone in the galaxy and the planet, they all award you in the game, and, and you get like a hero's honor after that, and you get honored as a hero, and everybody celebrates, and the game ends where it celebrates, and all the galaxies and planets are saved. So the game ends where the team saves the galaxy and the team are rewarded at the end and they pretty much fly home to their home planet and that they will always protect the galaxy and that they will always look out for the universe. And that was the ending of the game, and that's really the ending of the game. So I like how, like, as the end credits roll, like, I like how in the end credits, Juno is, like, disco dancing, and all the Jet Force Gemini team are just chilling, and Velma's embarrassed, and, and Lupa kind of seems to like it. And I don't know, I, I just like this whole scene alone where he's just dancing. That's just kind of funny. Like, he's just dancing as the credits roll. I don't know, that's just kind of funny. Like, okay, even though I have mixed feelings on this game, and even though I think this is an alright game, this scene alone is a bonus for me. 10 out of 10 on this one. On this scene. So that was Jet Force Gemini. And overall, what do I think about it? Well, I just think it's just okay. And it's just okay, and it's so okay that it's just average, to say the least. Like, it's just a really average game. So guys, I give Jet Force Gemini a 6 out of 10. And I think giving it a 6 out of 10 makes the most sense, really. Also, I think the controls in this game are very bad. And really, and I think that the controls in this game are a pain in my ass. And I also think that the shooting and aiming are really horrible here, and that they're awful. But to be fair, but to be fair, the controls of this game are really average when you get used to them, really. When you get used to them in, in the game. And once you know what you're doing, the controls are just average in this game. But still, the shooting and aiming are really lame here, and I think they're very sloppy in this game, overall. 
So overall, guys, that was what I think about Jet Force Gemini. And so, guys, those are my thoughts on Jet Force Gemini. So, guys, I'm Arch Critic, and I'm out. And I'll see you guys later, and I'll see you guys around, and I'll see you guys next time, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, and bye.